hey, a million years ago, I did a talk show, and that's what you're gonna see, so enjoy. It's just short clips, but I think you'll dig it. I'm sitting here with G. Gordon Liddy. How you doing? I'm doing real well. It's good to see you. It's good to be with you. I just loved you in Sister Act because I grew up in those Roman Catholic schools and I was able to sing along all those <laughs> songs that you were doing. I just loved it. Now see, I would, I would like to be on a, a fly on the wall with you in the theater singing along to Sister Act. <laughs> this quest for truth with Watergate mm -hmm. I'm told that on the 20th anniversary of the break-in, mm -hmm. that you took your number one rated radio show yeah. to... And we the, did a remote broadcast from, right from the Watergate. From, right from the Watergate. And you invited and had, the guys? I had the arresting officers on either side of me, and we did the program right from there. We had a wonderful time, and it just drove the liberal establishment bananas. And it was, it was sort of the neatest way I could say F you to them right, that I could think right. of. Now, how do you get from being perceived as this villainous man mm -hmm. to a guy with a number one radio program, a guy who does occasionally debate with Tim Leary yeah. and does Penn and Teller movies? <laughs> How does this must I just, be I just guess I'm lucky. I've, I've had a fabulously interesting life, and uh, every day it gets more and more interesting, and I, I just you know, live right out there on the edge and love it. Uh, of course, uh, with respect to my acting career, uh, I have a tremendous advantage, according to Mrs. Liddy. I always play villains, and she says, that way you don't have to act. You just go on out there and be your own sweet self, and it works. Do you guys, you and, and Mrs. Liddy, get into political discussions? Does she feel... Uh, not, not so much political discussions. Uh, we have enough arguments about, you know, just our interpersonal relationship. Right, right. We don't have to bring politics or religion into it, you know? <laughs> but you said something that, that stuck in my head, and I wanted to ask you. You said you married your wife because she was a big girl? So I said to myself, I will find a big, powerful woman whose father, I hope, will be a champion athlete and who's terrific at math. And there, alone on the sofa, is this stunningly beautiful woman, big girl. And I said, I'm gonna make some points because she was doing something I thought she was doing the New York Times crossword puzzle. She was doing math. Well, what it was, you know, I, I can do the New York Times crossword puzzle in ink. I said, man, I'm gonna go over there and really impress her. Unfortunately, she was not doing the New York Times. She was doing differential calculus, which is how she amuses herself. I fell in love immediately. Three weeks later, I took her out on a ferry boat in the moonlight, and I proposed. And she said, no, you're too short. <laughs> but I was persistent. I started singing to her. I, was, you know, I had my voice trained by Astolfo Pesce, to whom Dorothy Kirsten went in Rome. And I sang, and I sang, and I sang. And I finally wore this poor woman down. We married. We had five children. And at one time, all five of them were under five years old, at which time she said, Gordon, for God's sake, please stop singing. 